We welcome you once again to our weekly Sunday School lesson where we get a chance to dive into God's Word, to be able to stay encouraged, and also to be able to be a witness to others for the wonderful things that God has done and is doing in our lives. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we come once again thanking you for who you are and what you have done. We thank you this morning for your many blessings and your many acts of kindness. We thank you, Father God, that although the world seems dim, although the world seems uncertain, we thank you for the life of Jesus who assures us that, Father God, that he gives us life and life more abundantly. We thank you this morning. We praise your holy name for you truly are worthy to be praised. We ask you to bless everybody under the sound of my weak voice. Whatever they stand in the need of, we petition you, we plea, and we pray that you will supply all of their needs according to your riches and glory, which is in Christ Jesus. Continue to, Father God, as we travel through this faith journey, continue to give us the strength and the courage to keep focusing on you, looking to the hills which cometh our help, knowing that all of our help comes from you, O Lord, for you our strength and our Redeemer. It's in Jesus' name we pray, and we do say amen, amen, and amen again. Again, this month, this month, the month of October, is Breast Cancer Awareness. So I wear my pink ribbon to honor and also have pink tie and pocket silk, but most of all, we want to honor those who have fought the cancer fight and still fighting the cancer fight. But we pray that God will touch you, heal you, deliver you, and give you the strength and testify of his saving and redeeming work. Also, the month of October is Pastor Clergy Appreciation, and we're so thankful for all of those preachers, evangelists, and pastors, ministers all over the land who sacrifice their time to deliver or be a gospel carrier of the word of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. So I'm thankful for all of you. Stay encouraged, stay on the wall, and let's get this done together. Again, this is part of our fall lesson, lesson number seven, October the 17th. 2021, unit number two, called to praise God, called to praise God. And our topic for this Sunday school lesson, I shall be released. I shall be released. Our devotional reading is Psalm 68, verse 1 through 6. And our background scripture is Psalms 107, Psalms 107. And our printed passage is Psalms 107, verse 1 through 9 and 39 through 43. And our key verse says, Then they cried unto the Lord in their trouble, and he delivered them out of their distresses. Psalms 107, verse number six. And our lesson aims for this lesson, number one, explore the importance of having a relationship with God, the deliverer. Number two, place value on the role of giving thanks to God. Number three, pray for those who need God's deliverance. And our key terms for this Sunday school lesson, number one, cried out, which means to call or shout or simply cry out. Number two, to dwell, which means to live, inhabit, or remain, or simply to settle. Number three, gathered, which is to assemble, collect, or to gather together. Then there is good, which means pleasant, agreeable, and virtuous. Number five is goodness, which is kindness, worthiness, favor, and unfailing love. Number six is redeem, redeem, which is bought back, act as a kingsman. 
And when we look at our biblical context, this is the first Psalm of the fifth book of the Psalms. The 150 Psalms are divided into five distinct groupings or books, each closing with a prayer or benediction. Psalms 105 and 106 join Psalms 107, constituting a trilogy of praise and thanksgiving psalm. Psalms 107 is considered to be a orphan psalm because the author is anonymous or unknown. Psalm 107 beautifully praises God's mighty deliverance of the lost, the captive, the sick, and those in danger. The psalm is referred to as the psalm of redeem. It is a call for the redeemed to gather together and worship the Lord. Thankfulness to God should be constantly, it should always be on our lips for those whom he had saved. And this is why David said, I will bless the Lord at all time and his praise shall continuously be in my mouth. This Psalm was written to celebrate the Jews return from their exile in Babylon. And when we look at our introduction, in the midst of pressing problem, Christians often enjoy singing songs about living in peace or being delivered. Such songs for strength to fight for things that promote peace. There are times when even the most resilient and self-sufficient amongst us must admit there are times when we need a helping hand. Life is filled with trouble. That is why we need God and a few good people in our lives to help us to make it through. No one can make this journey by themselves or alone. And this is why Solomon reminds us in Ecclesiastes chapter 4, verse 9 through 12, he says, Two are better than one because they have a good reward for their labor. For if they fall, the one will lift up his fellow, but woe to him that is alone when he falleth. For he have no for he have not another to help him up. Again, if two lie together, then they have heat. But how can one be warm alone? And if one prevail against him, two will withstand him. And a three-fold cord is not easily broken. God created us to live and fellowship with him in community with one another. No matter what the situation awaits us in life, every believer can safety trust in the shelter of God's safety. Sadly, even when we strive for excellence and happiness, our independence can cause us to wait until we hit rock bottom before we reach out to others for help. You know, our family and our friends, but I'm reminded that all oh, what a friend we have in Jesus, all of our sins and grief to bow, all oh, what a privilege it is to carry everything to God in prayer. As we reach for others, we yet can be heard saying phrases, I hope there is somebody up there that can help. Even when that help feels as if it is not deserved. This is even more reason for faith. And the reason we rejoice when we are delivered, when we have our breakthrough. When God come through for us and then we can remember that God is 
a deliverer. Yes, he is. He's a deliverer. He's the same yesterday, today, and forevermore. And we can depend on God even when we cannot depend on nobody else. Regardless of where we are in life, it is said that we are in one or three positions. We're either heading into a storm, we're either in a storm or headed out of a storm. So what am I saying? So people need deliverance from the cares of this world. We are not to focus on how long we've been in the storm, but we are to focus that help is on the way. In other words, what I'm saying, there is light at the end of the tunnel. As we go through this lesson, Psalm 107, it encourages us to be thankful and no matter what season we're in, and we ought to thank God for his deliverance. He's an on-time God. Yes, he is. He might not come when you want him, but he's never late, but he's always on time. So let's look at our outlines this morning. Our first outline said, thank God for his deliverance. Thank God for his deliverance. Psalms 107, verse 1 through 6. And verse 1 says, oh, give thanks unto the Lord, for he is good, for his mercy endureth forever. Number two, let the redeemed of the Lord say so whom he have redeemed from the hand of the enemy. Number three, and gather them out of the lands from the east and from the west and from the north and from the south. Number four, they wandered in the wilderness in a solitary way. They found no city to dwell in. Verse five, hungry and thirsty, their souls fainted in them. Number six, then they cried unto the Lord in their trouble, and he delivered them out of their distresses. My brothers and sisters, the psalmist opens up with a call for gratitude. He says, oh, give thanks unto the Lord. God has done so much for us, and we have so much for which to thank him. Gratitude to God is a proper starting point for worship. God deserves gratitude because of all his goodness and his everlasting mercy. The psalmist gives a call to give praise of thanksgiving to the Lord. And why? Because of the recipients of the call are simply the redeemed. So what he's saying this morning is, if God has never done anything for you, then you may not have anything to be thankful for. But if he has picked you up, if he has turned you around, if he has placed your feet on solid ground, the psalmist said, let the redeemed of the Lord say something, say so, say something about what God has done. You may be asking, who, who is the redeemed? The redeemed that we're talking about is outlined in Isaiah 62 and 12. And it says, and they called him the holy people and the redeemed of the Lord. And thou shalt be called, sought out, a city not forsaken. This refers to the captive returning from Babylon. This word has much wider use then and now to include reclamation of the Lord's people throughout time and from the prophetic messianic perspective through Christ, both through the Lamb and the final confirmation at judgment. To say so comes from the Hebrew word Amar. Amar. It carries the meaning to utter or to boast. He wants us to proclaim to everyone all that he has done. 
My brothers and sisters, we boast about any and everything, but we seldomly boast about what God has done in our lives. This is not so much a mandate to witness as a declaration of the fact that those who truly live in God's presence would not be able to keep his glorious experience to themselves. It's like Jeremiah. It's like fire shut up in my bones and I just can't hold it to myself. I got to tell somebody about all that God has done for me. I am to testify. I am to witness. I am to worship and I am to study his word. The initial call to worship God is called to thank him because he is good. God goodness is of his divine nature represented throughout time and shared in several other Psalms, Psalms 25 and eight, Psalm 34 and eight, Psalms 85, 86 and five, Psalm 105, Psalms 106 and verse one and Psalms 118 and one. Life experience can often leave a bitter taste in our mouth, but David testifies in Psalm 34 and eight. He said, Oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. Blessed is the man that trusted in him. You see the goodness of God is ever faithful and never failing. The writer begins to give additional description of God's goodness, expanding on his deliverance. He reminds them of how God kept them when they was wondering and could not find a place to call home to simply lay their heads. He reminds them of how God provided food and water amidst their wandering, keeping them satisfied and even sustained. It is interesting to note the ordering of the psalmist's words as he acknowledged the Lord's deliverance and keeping power prior to acknowledging the people cry and God's responding. The writer is teaching all to understand and simply to trust God. Even during trouble and storm, God is a present help in times of trouble. Acknowledge your God who is bigger than your problem. Since God has heard and helped us, we should testify and give thanks for his deliverance. There is a common behavior pattern in the lives of God's people, which can be summarized by these two word series, sin and supplication, servitude and salvation, rebellion and repentance, retribution and restoration. Regardless on what position it is, God is a deliverer. We must understand, first of all, people stray from the Lord, walking in disobedient to his word. When they come to themselves, they cry out to the Lord in confession of their sin. He then forgives their sin and brings them back to a place of blessing once more. It is the old story of the prodigal son, and surely no other story is more familiar, more relevant, and true to life than when we have wandered off. The good shepherd is able to bring us back to the fold where we may receive the nourishment from the shepherd. Two basic facts emerges from the contemplation of this ever recurring cycle. One is the perpetual proneness of a human heart to wander away from a loving and living God. The other is the seemingly inexhaustible mercy of the Lord in restoring his people when they come to him in 
true repentance. Our second outline says, thank God for the feeling. Thank God for the feeling. In other words, when you empty, he fills you up. The same way when your car is on E, you stop by the filling station and you put gas in it so you can go on your journey. God is the same way. When we're empty, he fills us up that we may run on just a little while longer to see what the end is going to be. And I text is Psalm 107, verse 7 through 9. And verse 9, verse 7 says, And he led them forth by the right way, and they might go to a city of habitation. Verse 8, Oh, that men would praise the Lord for his goodness and for his wondrous work to the children of men. Verse 9, For he satisfied the longing soul and filleth the hungry so with goodness. The sum this father describes God's act of deliverance. God is neither distant nor far removed from his people. He is their very present help. He chooses engagement and relationship with those who love him. God gives guidance to those who seek him, leading them to a place of peace and safety. The psalmist now used four vivid illustrations of God's deliverance to reinforce his call to thanksgiving. After each incident, he repeats the call in the form of an interjection. The four-fourth refrain keeps connection with the central theme of thanksgiving. These reframes are number one, Care over lost travelers, which is outlined in verse 4 through 9. Care over the captives, which is outlined in verse 10 through 16. Care over the sick, which is verses 17 through 22. And care over the seafarers, which is outlined in verses 23 through 32. Each one calls for a reflection upon God's goodness and his protection and is a reminder on how God preserves and sustains humanity. All of these are reason to be thankful. Every reflection upon God's goodness should inspire gratitude for many things that God has done, both seen and unseen. The call, oh, that man would praise the Lord, in verse 8, is a cry for all of humanity to praise God. In the midst of various or common enemies and struggles that divide or unite us, we should praise the Lord together for his many blessings toward us. God turns his ear to hear the cries and the plea of his suffering children, and he delivers them to a place of satisfaction. Whether lost, whether hungry, whether thirsty, or whether exhausted, these wanderers dignify the Israelites in exile. But they also typify anyone who has not found dissatisfaction that comes from knowing God. Anyone who recognizes his or her own lostness can receive the offer of Jesus to satisfy these needs. Can you look at the scriptures and see that Jesus is a way which is outlined in John 14 and 6, that Jesus is the bread of life, outlined in John 6 and 33, that Jesus is the water of life, which is outlined in John chapter 4, verse 10 through 14, and that Jesus also is a giver of rest, which is outlined in Matthew chapter 11, verse 28 through 30. In other words, God sustains his people by his unfailing goodness and love, and he satisfies those who eagerly yearn for his presence. God satisfied and filled those who are longing for him.
Those who seek God will find him and be filled. Jesus on the Sermon on the Mount reminds us in Matthew 5 and 6. He says, Bless are they which do hunger and thirst after righteousness, for they shall be filled. As we seek his face, we will find him and we shall be filled. For this we should give praise and thanks unto our God. And then our final and third outline. Thank God for his love. Thank God for his love. Psalms 107 verse 39 through 43. And verse 39 reads, again, there are many and brought low through oppression, affliction, and sorrow. Verse 40, he poureth, he poureth contempt upon princes and causes them to wander in the wilderness where there is no way. Verse 41, yet setteth he the poor on high from affliction and maketh him families like a flock. Verse 42, the righteous shall see it and rejoice and all iniquity shall stop her mouth. Verse 43, whoso is wise and will observe these things, even they shall understand the loving kindness of the Lord. The psalmist now closes with a description of blessings and curses that are apparent in God's rule of nature and humanity. These verses may serve as a general conclusion drawn from the more particular description earlier in verses 4 through 32. Some conclude that the verses were designed for a separate occasion. However, a closer look would suggest that the bridge of God's grace, his deliverance, and filling is paved with his loving kindness. God's unfailing love for us is a catalyst that calls oppressors to account for their deeds and allow justice to reign. God will remove them from their position in the, and lift the abuse, causing them to rejoice because of God's display of his love. This psalm ends just as it started with an appeal. The psalmist call all to consider, to meditate on, and celebrate the Lord for his love. He's challenging us not to merely seek to understand God, but to come to know a true and loving God, to know him in a intimate way, knowing that he redeems his people, punishes the wicked, and loves us. The truth is, those who have never truly suffered may not appreciate God as much as those who have matured under hardship. Those who have seen God work in distress have a deeper insight into his loving kindness. If you have experienced great trials, you have the potential for a great praise because God is greater than any enemy will ever confront. God is greater than any disease that we can ever get. My brothers and sisters, the psalm strikes a chord similar to that of the Apostle Paul. All things work together for good to them that love God, to them who are called according to his purpose, outlined in Romans 8 and 28. God's pattern of love, his redemption, his restoration should ignite a flame of unprompted, unstripped gratitude and praise and devotion unto God. Again, the sumness, as in verse 2, calls, let the redeemed of the Lord say so. Let us give thanks unto God the Lord. As we close out this lesson, as believers, as Christians, we should continuously thank God for his everlasting and unconditional love. As a sign of our Christian love and fellowship, 
We should routinely share with others through testimonies how God delivered and answered our prayers. This sharing encouraged and strengthened other believers to walk by faith and praise God, showing thankfulness, knowing that he can deliver us when we're powerless to do so. God eyes is on you, even when you feel overwhelmed or mistreated. God's eye remains on you. God sees you and he cares about you. Be grateful for a God that loves you enough to bring justice in his own time when you have been treated wrongly or unfairly as believers as believers we must seek and encourage others to seek God's help during hard times and to thank God when he rescues the growth for us is to learn to thank him even when we cannot trace or understand a clear path for deliverance. As we strengthen our faith by studying God's word, we must understand that God sent the ultimate deliverer in the person of Christ Jesus. Jesus says in, in Luke chapter 4, verse 18 through 19, he said, The Spirit of the Lord is upon me because he has anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. He has sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to preach the deliverance to the captive, the recovering of sight to the blind, to set at liberty them that are bruised, and to preach the acceptable year of the Lord. And then this love is reminded in John 3, 16. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. I shall be released. Can I encourage you and tell you there's power in the name of Jesus. There is power to break every chain. There is power to break every addiction. There is power in the name of Jesus to break every stronghold. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this lesson. We thank you for being a great deliverer. We thank you for fighting our battles. We thank you, Father God, even when the war weighs against us, whether internal or external, you there to come to our rescue, to be a present help in times of trouble. We well, thank you, Father God, for sending us the ultimate deliverer in the person of Jesus Christ, who is our redeemer. He's our savior. Father God, he's our everything. And help us to focus on him. Father God, looking unto Jesus, the author and the finisher of our faith, who endured the shame and endured the cross, that we may be set free from the fears of this world. We thank you for this day. We ask you to bless us in a mighty way. Continue to allow us to keep our eyes on you and you alone as we travel through this barren lane. Help us to lay aside every weight that beset us and cause us to stumble and fall and help us to receive your salvation and your mercy. Father God, through your son, Jesus to Christ, we thank you now. We love you, Lord, and we praise your holy name, for you truly are worthy to be praised. In Jesus' name we pray. We say amen, amen, and amen again. My brothers and sisters, again, this is Pastor James Daniels, pastor of the Friendship Missionary Baptist Church, located in Volula, Alabama, and I'm thankful and grateful for the opportunity and the platform to stand before you and deliver you our weekly Sunday school lesson. There's no greater joy than to be able to study and to meditate on God's word and express his good, his goodness and his loving kindness towards you. We ask you to continue to keep us in your prayers, continue to stay focused on the Lord. Even if you're not going to church, let's tune in. Let's stay in our Bible. Let's pray for one another. This is a season that we are to encourage ourselves as David did in the Lord. God bless you. May keep you until the next time we meet again. 
Stay focused and stay prayed up. And most of all, stay pressing.